So, uh, so let me start. So good evening. Uh, my name is Mitch Weisberg. I'm here for EdChat Interactive. Uh, we're presenting a series of FETC uh, uh, featured speakers. Uh, we're recording these, so um, you're, hopefully you're either watching live or you're you're watching recorded. Uh, tonight's topic is about um, is digital safety and digital citizenship. How can we allow the uh, students or kids to really harness the internet and still remain safe? And that's being delivered by Desiree Alexander, uh, um, who's an FETC featured speaker. Um, because FETC is providing her, um, they've given us a discount code. And of course, I wrote it wrong in the slide. <laughs> so the discount code is actually EC1129 uh, for a registration discount. So um, if you register for FETC and use that code, you get a discount. And I think Desiree has another code that, um, that that's a discount as well. So uh, we try to uh, run these to be interactive and hopefully a, a few more people join so that we can make it interactive. Uh, we provide uh, interesting education topics. We try to provide interesting education topics in a way that's different from a typical webinar. Uh, you know, typical webinar, you have a person talking like I'm doing now and you have slides, but what we try to do is allow people to interact, to reflect and participate. So um, before I go into that, actually, let me talk about our next two sessions. Uh, next week, we're having a session on international ed tech tools. Uh, some of the, uh, some of the tools that uh, teachers are using that don't come from the U.S. Those are uh, those will be really interesting. And then on November 29th, uh, after the week after Thanksgiving, uh, we're having a session. Um, Sunny Magana uh, has come up with a way to actually quadruple academic achievement. So he has a dare to people to let's see if you can double academic achievement. But he's betting that you can actually quadruple it. So that'll be another interesting session. That'll be on November 29th. And let me go through the Shindig platform because the way we make these interaction active is by using Shindig. So you'll see that there are uh, buttons next uh, around your avatar. Um, there's, I'll, let me make this larger for a second. Um, you have an avatar at the bottom of your screen. And on the left, there's something called text chat. If you type that something in there, you can text with other people who are here. Um, there's a next to that, there's a button called ask question. Uh, if you click on the ask question button, you can ask a question of me. Raise hand is if you're live and you want to come to the stage, raise your hand and we can put you up on the stage. Those are three ways of interacting text chat uh, with the other participants and with Desiree. Uh, ask question. You can ask a question to me. Raise hand says that you um, you have a, you know, you'd like me to contact you, or you'd like to come up on stage and have a question that you'd like to to ask. And then uh, when you if you did type in if you did click on the text chat, you get a screen looks that looks like this. And then if you click on the avatar again, those those go away. Um, and then the, the final way to interact is if you see that there are other people here, you can click on the avatar of another person and have a private discussion. So there's times during the, the, this evening where we'll encourage interaction, we'll encourage you to click on the avatar of another person and, um, and have a conversation about some question that Desiree asks. So that's basically um, how you use Shindig. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to first get uh, Desiree's slides up. And then I'm going to bring Desiree up here with me. And Desiree, well, uh, good evening. You're, you're in Louisiana, right? Yes, I am. Okay. Well, I'm I'm in New York. What's it um how what's it like in in Louisiana right now? Is it, you know, temperature wise? Well, we were supposed to be in the 70s, which is um very good for us cuz we're still kind of fighting with the 80s. Um, but we were wow. actually in the 50s. We were in the 50s, 50s today. So I was like, "What?" Yeah, 
was a little, wow, a little was, under us. Well, it was 60 here. I'm just outside of New York. So, okay. You know, um, so, yeah. And, um, you know, why don't you, you know, why don't we start off before we go over your slides or, you know, just what, what do you do? Okay. Well, my name is Desiree Alexander. I actually have a slide um, showing you a little bit more about myself. So my name is Desiree Alexander. I am the, yep, yeah, and it's the, the very next slide. Yay. I'm the regional director of North Louisiana for APEL. That is a um, educational nonprofit in Louisiana. APEL stands for the Associated Professional Educators of Louisiana. And I run my own consulting business, Educator Alexander Consulting. And that brings me all over the nation doing this, teaching teachers, training teachers. Um, it really is a huge passion in my life. So that's what my life pretty much consists of right now is training teachers and helping teachers be what they actually want to be. And how did you get involved with digital safety? Digital safety, well, I think because I taught English, and we would do a lot of things um, using technology. But I think the big push was when I became a librarian, uh, um, a school librarian. And then uh, I split that time also as a public librarian. And that really got my interest into digital citizenship and using technology safely. And it, that became part of my job was mm -hmm. to train our students how to do this correctly. And I had to find a niche of how to talk about this topic where it was practical. It wasn't, um, well, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but it wasn't right, intimidating. Right. Uh, so, mm -hmm. Yeah, so being the librarian, I think is what really pulled it out. Oh, really interesting. Okay, and uh, so do you want me to advance the slides or? Uh, sure, uh, if you can go back one. Okay. Oh, backwards, yes, there we go. Go back to the first slide and we can, kind of talk about the um, the title and why we named it what we named it. So the title is Safe and Informed, How Can Students Harness the Internet? Because we wanted to talk about not just one aspect, not just digital citizenship, not just being safe online, but just everything as a whole. And my presentation at FETC, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that at the end, but the, um, the presentation at FETC, I'm actually going to train you or talk to you as if you were a student. So I'm actually giving you a presentation at FETC to where you can actually take that presentation, modify it, and use it directly with your students. So this is a little bit different because we wanted to have a discussion and we wanted to do um, a discussion of why is this important? Why would we do this? So that's why the title is what it is. How can students actually harness the power of the internet but also stay safe and informed. So on the following slide, I do want to show you that you should be tweeting. Tweet at FETC, hashtag FETC, and my Twitter handle is at Educator Alex. So definitely tweet out, tell us what you think about digital citizenship, tell us what you think about um, harnessing the internet, and what you think about this session, whether you're watching it live or whether you're watching the recording. So on the next slide, we've already talked about who I am. So we're gonna move forward and jump into what we're talking about tonight. So factor myth, students are digital natives so they know about being safe online. I hear this a lot from educators. They'll say, well, you know what? Those babies know more about technology than I do. They know what they're doing. And I have to stop my educators and say, okay, let's, let's talk about that a little bit more. Yes, they know technology. They're used to it. That's their life now. You know, that I mean, we just, hands down, if you're one, you're like, oh, we need to save them from technology. Technology is here. Okay, so now we have to see about what do we do to keep them safe and, and keep their brains from not being fried. So this, in my opinion, is a myth. Because yes, students are digital natives. That doesn't mean they know how to stay safe online. It's one of those things where, again, teachers are telling me a lot, you know, well, they know how to do everything. I don't really need to talk about technology. I definitely don't need to talk about digital citizenship because they see all these commercials about 
cyberbullying and we tell them, you know, not to not to be necking online and all this stuff. But what I like to stop and talk to my teachers about is who do you think is teaching them this information? They are not born suddenly knowing how to deal with digital citizenship. So no, it's a myth that they just automatically know because they know how to tweet, because they know how to use Snapchat, that they know how to use it responsibly and that they know how to use it safely. So on the next slide, we're going to look at a little video that kind of hones that in. And then we're going to have a little bit of a discussion. Regarding online safety, um, regarding we online all safety, are very concerned. Uh, I was surprised how many concerned. students said, yeah, I, I was surprised how many students said, yeah, I was surprised. The student left her location services on her Instagram account, and therefore an older teen from another city was able to find her and come to our campus. And that was a really scary situation for that student and that family. The address conversation wasn't the only thing that they were not aware of that you shouldn't share online, such as your date of birth, your parents' name. They were clueless to all of that. So I want to talk a little bit about my story, and then I have a question for you guys to discuss. I taught sixth grade English, and we had a, we called it the Bebo explosion. This was before Facebook. This was before all the social media that we know. And it was a website called Bebo, B-E-B-O. You may have never even heard about it, but our students definitely heard about it. And we learned that they were on Bebo just doing a whole bunch of crazy stuff, including giving out all of their information. They were accepting random people. They didn't know who they were. And they were giving out what church they went to, what they were doing every day, just an unusual amount of information. So what we decided to do as teachers to, is to see how much they really were giving out. We formed a student. So we got a picture. This, this was before catfishing and all of that. We created a student and we just wanted to see how much information they would give out. And it was eye opening. Just the stuff that they were saying to each other. You know, this was really before all of this information was was out there. And that is before I even became a librarian. That is one of those the things that really got me interested in digital citizenship. And we actually shut down class um, as a sixth grade team. We just we just had to shut it down and teach life skills and teach digital citizenship. And the students were clueless. They were honestly clueless. They didn't, it wasn't like, oh, I'm just being defiant. They didn't know. They didn't understand. And it's funny that that was some years ago, but our students are still clueless. We still have to stop and train them and teach them how to be safe online. So on the next slide, I have a question for you to discuss. Why is it so important to discuss the topic of cyber safety directly? with students. So not as is, hey, why should we discuss it? I already kind of talked about that. But why is it important to discuss it straightforward and directly with students? So so I'll, I'll fill in for uh, people in case, it, in, in, until somebody raises their hand and says that they want to come up. And, and I mean, I think we do have somebody in here. Hopefully she, she shares with us. Oh, and I, and I hope she, yes, uh, I hope she shares with us. Uh, but, and, but in the meantime, are you thinking that, in, you know, you use the term discuss. So that's a little bit different to me than why should we tell students about cyber safety? So you're, you're thinking that it's a two-way discussion, right? Yes, 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 yes. And so just taking a wild guess, <laughs> um, I'm thinking that by making it a, a discussion that the students are more likely to take ownership of it, that if uh, putting myself in the shoes of a student, uh, if I'm told something by an adult, I'm going to try to test it, you know, like, oh, you, they told me not to do this. So let me just see what happens if I do it, you know, whereas if I'm discussing it, and like I'm saying, well, you know, I don't know if I should do this. And, you know, then the adult can say, well, why not? And so I can then sell myself 
um, and commit myself that I'm going to be doing the right things and the, and the person who's the adult who knows can be guiding the conversation. Is that related to what you were thinking? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's one of the things we're going to discuss a little bit further down too, is um, the do's and don'ts for bringing up this topic with students. And you just mm -hmm. talked about one of the big do's and that's to have a discussion. If you start train start treating this like a, you know, I'm telling you what to do. I told you so kind of situation. That's when we get our students into we back our students into a corner. We back our children into a corner. We back our teens into a corner. Because mm -hmm. if we're telling them, hey, don't put that naked picture online. Don't talk to that stranger. Don't do this. Don't do that. And then if they actually do it and they run into something of when they're in a dangerous situation, they're not going to tell you because they don't want to get that stern talking to when we need to start opening up more of a discussion to where if they do get in trouble, that they have some adult in their life. Now, what I usually tell them, and you know, I'm not going to be happy. I'm not going to be like, yay, thank you for telling me. What you I mean, I'm going to be upset. However, I need you to come to me with it. I'm not going to punish you and all that. I need you to come to me with it. And then we can talk about some, you know, what did you do wrong and all that kind of stuff. But I need mm -hmm. you to come to me. With it. And just opening up that discussion of, hey, I'm telling you all these dangers. What have you already run into? Your students mm -hmm. have already run into stuff. You know, opening that up to where they can say, well, you know what? I met a guy online and this is what happened. Because you'll be surprised where if a student is opening up, more students will open up. And it's going to right. not only teach them some of the ways to handle some of these things, but it's going to teach you as well what's really happening out there and what your students, that good student, that bad student, what they're actually getting involved in because of their online activity. And so it's interesting because Sonia uh, was texting me and uh, she said, she brought up two cool points. Uh, one point is is that uh, kids are born really to be trusting and mm -hmm. this is a place where you have to really understand where you can trust and where you can't and so if we don't talk to them and we don't mold them that uh, help them understand they're not going to know when they can be totally trusting and when they don't so that's that was point number one which I thought was very insightful mm -hmm. and point number two is the other reason why we need to talk to the students is we you know it's really our responsibility I mean, like we were put in the roles of being the ones who are responsible for helping them become, uh, you know, become safe and um, and become adults and, and functioning yeah. adults. And so it's our responsibility to do this. We already know that there are certain traps that they're likely to fall into. And so it's incumbent on us to help them avoid those traps or when they get into them, as you brought up, um, help them recover from them. Yes. That's so thank beautiful. You. Thank you. Yeah, that was those are awesome points. Awesome points. So I think we're going to go ahead and move on. Sure. And I'll so put myself down. Three, okay. So there's three goals when you're talking about um, talking about keeping your students safe or keeping your children or tweens and teens. Uh, safe online and it's safety, privacy, and positivity. So that's what I was saying that we don't want to just concentrate on one thing tonight, like just uh, digital, digit <laughs> digital citizenship, um, but we want to concentrate on all three of these. And when you're talking to your students, you do want to bring up all three of these and, and see what they're feeling about them and see how intelligent they are in all three of these, in all three of these. Um, topics. So the first topic, moving on to the next slide, we're going to talk about safety. So when we're talking about safety, there's some things that we want to make sure that we're bringing up with our students. And again, the session at FETC, actually, I'm teaching you as a student. So instead of kind of discussing these things in a, in a broad context, I'm, I'm actually saying these are the words that you can say to your students. Um, it's tried and true. I've done it with plenty of students. So these are the words. This is how you can bring up these topics to where this is more of a, um, a discussion. So cyberbullying, of course, is one. And it really disheartens me when I hear educators and parents say things like, well, you know, bullying is a part of life. I've went through it. 
yeah, you've gone through it. And of course, we're always going to to deal with bullies, whether it be, you know, whether you're 50, 40, whatever, you're going to deal with somebody that tries to, you know, put themselves over you. However, cyberbullying is different. Okay. So where, when we were getting bullied in school, we had an escape. Our escape was going home and these students just do not have that. And even when and you may have been being bullied by that one bully who was bullying everybody <laughs> nine times out of ten. Um, you it was different because you could, like I said, you could escape it, and maybe not even everyone know knew that you were being bullied. Where cyberbullying is just it's massive, it's worldwide. The whole world can know that that person calls you that word, and everybody can chime in on it. They can chime in anonymously anonymously on it. So it's one of those things where we have to talk about it. We have to bring it up and we have to talk about it more than be kind. Let's move on. Like we have to discuss it because it's one of those things that is changing the trajectory of students' lives. You know, it really is that serious. We have babies killing themselves because they just don't know how to deal with it. And I don't want to place blame, but Whose fault is that really? Okay, if we're not teaching them how to deal with this stuff, if we're not teaching them how to not cyberbully, what is cyberbullying and what does that really mean? How does it truly affect people? We're not doing our jobs. Okay, so that's one of the things we want you want to definitely bring up and discuss. Disturbing content is another one. And notice how I put disturbing content and online porn. I feel like maybe five years ago. When you said disturbing content online, that's the first thing you thought about. I mean, of course, naked people, you know, and other stuff, you don't want them to see it. However, there's so much more disturbing content online these days that it's not just porn. Porn is not the top of my list of what I don't want my babies to see, quite honestly. You know, there's just so many, and I'm not about to try to list them, believe me, because I have some stuff in my mind right now, but there's so much disturbing content. So we need to train our students and train our children. What do I do if I see that? What if I do if I not only see it, but I'm affected by it? You know, I think all of us as adults have seen something that we said, if, whether it was a movie, a picture, a video that I just didn't need to see that. You know, like that is something I didn't need to have in my psyche. I didn't need to know that existed. And your students are seeing this as well. So not only what do I do if it comes up? What if I do if I see it? But what do I do if I'm affected by it? By it. Um, one of the things I talked to my, um, talked to my students about, we read the book, 13 reasons why, and I haven't seen the, the, the TV show or anything like that, but it's about a young lady who kills herself because of bullying and 13 things that happened to her in her life. And when we read it, I really, I got kind of defensive and I was like, why, you know, some of the things that she wrote about, like some of her reasons, I just, I wasn't feeling them. I was just like, well, Okay, well, that happened. Get over it. Like, I'm not understanding. So, I had a really frank conversation with my high school students. Like, I, you know, I was pretty much like, why do y'all just not get over stuff? Like, what? And they told me something that really changed the way I looked at all of this stuff. And they said, no one teaches us how. And it just kind of like, I just paused and it kind of, it even gives me chills right now. I was like, wow, I never thought about that. You know, when I was younger and I was going through bullying and things like that, people taught me how to deal with it. You know, people taught me, hey, this is, you know, think about it this way and things like that. And, and one of the things they said is people just say get over it, but they're not telling us how to get over it. And I was like, oh, you know, like, Bow. so that's some of the things that we need to talk to them about. It's not only the bullying aspect, but how do I get over some of this stuff that I'm seeing and so many the uh, just dealing with politics in today's world. How do I get past some of this stuff? How, how do I deal with it? Viruses and spyware is another one that we don't think students have to deal with, and they do. Sexual predators, of course, and that's something that we really need to dig into a little bit more with our students because it's no longer, we talk about that in the FECC um, session that I do. It's no longer, don't go up to the big white van, the man that's going to hand you some candy. Like, 
we still have stranger danger, of course, but it's way more about online grooming these days. It's way more about sex trafficking these days. It's not, you know, and I kind of discuss this with my students. It's not so much of I want to steal you because I am a pedophile. It's now you are a dollar a dollar sign to me. So that's even more dangerous because there's more people that are not pedophiles, but I can sell you, you know, that kind of thing. So it's just, it's just a whole new world that unfortunately we have to deal with. And we have to get our babies to understand that and to understand how online grooming works. And that's one of the things that we, um, one of the cool things that we do in my session is we go through a conversation and we talk about, is this good that she said that? Is that bad that she said that? What did you get from this? What information could you, you know, and we kind of put ourselves in the minds of, what would I say to get you to respond, to give me that address? What can I say to get you to respond, to tell me if somebody's at home or not? So it's that kind of stuff that we need to just get to the nitty gritty and talk to our students about. Of course, too much screen time. We can uh, discuss that. Online reputation is a huge one. Okay. And it's one of those things where I, lo I love when I tell my teachers, you know, I'm like, yeah, I know you say stuff like when you get a job. People are going to be looking at your all your social media. And when you go to college, people are going to be looking at all your social media. If I'm in middle school, what do I care about a job in college? Like you're not reaching me at my level. Yeah, we as adults care about that. But maybe I don't want to go to college and maybe I don't want a job. Maybe I'm going to put something on there so I won't get a job. You know, so it's just we, we have to stop thinking as adults and start thinking on our students level about talking about online reputation and things like that. We want to hit them more at home. And again, that's some of the stuff that we really go into in the FECC um, session. Self-harm. There's so many websites out there telling our students how to harm themselves, how to, how to hide eating disorders, how to hide drug addictions. There's so much out there, guys, that we need to bring up, okay? Because you'll be surprised when that baby in the corner starts crying and, you know, you're, you're caught off guard because you don't really know what they're really going through. So we got to start talking about this with our students. And all online uh, radicalization, and that is, of course, the, the recruitment of our students into terrorist groups, into anything like that. So we really need to start discussing this. On the next slide, one. So, so actually, so before you get to the, before you get to the next slide, I, I have a okay. just a question also, and maybe this is another thing, or maybe it fits into one of these. Is um, I'm getting hit a lot by people pretending to be um, people that they're not, and that's and it's in a few different mm -hmm. ways. One is people who were tr friending me and saying that they're. So such and such a person, and I'm already, you know, I don't even think about it because I'm already friends with that person, but or I do, yeah. I do now, but so, but um, they're really not that person. So, so that's number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, I'm being hit by people saying, you know, um, here is like here's uh, the invoice that you requested. Now that's that's you know, or or here is click here for what you just ordered, and you know, yeah. so there are times where I really have ordered something. And the email comes back and, and it's like, well, I didn't really expect this in an email. Um, mm -hmm. And so it just seems like that, that, you know, the people claiming to be uh, friends or people claiming to be organizations that you bought something from or asked for something mm -hmm. is just is is happening more and more as well. And that's that those two things you're going to bring up in viruses and spyware and online grooming. So when we talk uh, about online grooming, we talk about that 17 year old hot guy that's probably a 40 year old, you know, guy in Wisconsin. So we talk about that kind of mm -hmm. thing and how to try to suss that out. And again, what can you say to not give out too much information and that kind of stuff and how to Perfect. how to suss people out, how to um you know, if you get to that point where y'all are talking more and more and more, telling somebody about it, um, if you're getting to that point where, well, I may kind of want to meet this person, that you're making sure that you are seeing them in person with their, like, talking mm -hmm. to you, not, oh, my camera's broken, or, you know, just, we, we talk about that kind of stuff with online grooming, and with viruses and spyware, we talk about um, not opening anything unless you know who it comes from. Definitely not opening links. Or even you know, if you think, yeah, 
if you think you know that it's come from, like, how do you, I might, my guess is you talk about this, how do you make sure that the person who's, who they say they are, real, that they really are that person? There's a lot of little things. Yeah. So one is yeah. looking at the actual email address, not looking at the person's name, but actually looking at the email address. And there's a lot of different weird stuff in that email address that shouldn't be there. It's looking at the language in the email or the, the friend request or whatever. If the language is a little off and you know that person doesn't speak that way or why would they put that verb there? That's a sign. Um, and the tried and true is call that person. So uh -huh. before you send that person money, before you do that, call that person and say, hey, did you send me this request? I've gotten email. I've gotten phone calls where people say, hey, did you send me that link? And I was like, oh, yeah, I did. Click on it. So, I mean, we definitely talk about that in viruses and spyware. Right. And and actually, so some of those thoughts, actually, I um, I, I was kind of thinking about them, but the, but I have to say that Sonia again, uh, you know, she texted me and she had some of these some of these ideas. Uh, she's um, it's a shame that she doesn't have a microphone uh, because right. her comments are really right on. Uh, she, and she just completed a um, a security awareness program, uh, and she Beautiful. and she teaches, yeah. Um, so, uh, so let's, let's, I guess you, you'd asked me to move on and then I, of course, def deflected you. So, uh, That's what I'll, we want to do is a discussion. Okay. So this, um, this is the next question is what is the top do and don't for discussing this topic with your student? What do you think the number one do and the number one don't is? So I, that's, um, so yeah, that's a good question. I mean, one thing is you don't want to be um, you don't want to be too prescriptive with the students, um, or you don't want to be rule and you know, just and or rules based because again they're kids, and as soon as you you do rules, I don't know that that would be number one, but it certainly would be up there. Um, and I guess one of the one of the top do's is is um, to me is you want to figure out how to say something that's appropriate to the child and that is not a lie because you you know you have a tendency child asks you a question and you don't think that you have an either you don't know or you don't have an answer that really you think is appropriate for the child so you lie about it um you know you just you kind of ruin your credibility so mm -hmm. so those would be uh, you know, being honest, but being, you know, appropriate language, appropriate for their age and not being prescriptive would be the, the two things I would put. I don't know. What, what are you, what are some of the ones that, you, that you're thinking? Well, I'm going to let Sonia answer. Let's see if she can text. Okay. In. Yeah. Sonia, maybe Correct you can, maybe, maybe you can type something in, uh, the, the, uh, the text and then I can, I can, I can bring that up also. Mm -hmm. Um, ah, <laughs> yeah, same here. It's like I'm, I was thinking. Uh, as she says she's uh, she's thinking. Um, okay. I could I could sing, <laughs> but no. <laughs> uh, you know, okay. and I guess I guess, I guess another thing is is you don't want to make light of things that could be serious either. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and she's trying to get her microphone working, working, which would be really cool. Oh yay! Uh, I would love yeah. that. So one of the one of the top do's is to actually talk about your experiences. So uh, that's one of the things that you mm -hmm. can do to actually put yourself on the student's level. Now, of course, you want to make it appropriate <laughs> for whatever is happening. Right. But put yourself in that situation and saying, guys, I've done it. This is what I did. One of the stories I tell, one of the ones I talk about in the epi that I talk about with the presentation is I tell them I was in college. Chatting was like the hot thing. You would go into chat rooms. You would talk to people. And I lived in a dorm. And I remember one day I was talking to a guy, I think, and um, we were just chatting. And I remember saying something like um, something about my room. Oh, it's cold in my room or something like that. And he said, oh, you live in a dorm. And I just kind of stopped like, wait, well, how, how did you know that? Why are you asking that? You know, and I asked him like, how do you know that? Why are you asking that? And you say, oh, because you said in my room and not in my house. And most people, if you're, if you're in a room, you're in a dorm. And most people, if you're in an apartment or something like that, you'll be like, oh, at home or in my house. And I was like, 
done. And I mean, it really just, wow. it gave me a whole perspective on chatting. I was like, oh my gosh. And I was at a college that, I mean, it wasn't that many dorms, you know what I mean? They right. could have come and be like, oh, you're here, you're here. So it just, it, it put in you know a whole new perspective for me. But imagine what your students are hearing. They're hearing, oh, you make mistakes too. You're doing this too. You're in this with me. And they're more likely to open up and go, well, you know what, Miss A, this is what happened to me. And now you have a rapport going on telling true mm -hmm. stories about what's really happening. Right. And Sonia brought up uh, real world examples. Examples are always helpful. Yes. 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 So one of the don'ts. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So one of the, the one of the top don'ts is kind of what I've already said. Don't go over their level. Okay. Anytime you go to extremes, your students are going to turn off. So for example, if you're going to say something that's so unrealistic, like don't use your real name online. Like, okay, like how? <laughs> you know, right. like, like, how, how am I not going to, don't post pictures online. Excuse me. You know, it's like one of those things. And I still hear people saying that, like, these are my tips. Don't post any pictures online. Who's going to do that? Who's going to not post? They take pictures every step of their journey in life. Just being unrealistic and giving them that advice that just really is not going to work for them um, just doesn't make sense. And like the thing that I said about, you know, if you do this, you're not going to get into college. Well, all right. I'm in sixth grade. Who cares? You know, like that's like we have to talk on their level. We have to um, not go to extremes. Even when you're giving those real world examples, if you go too far, you know, and then everybody was murdered. It's like, okay, you know, <laughs> you can't go to extremes because then your students are going to turn off. Interesting. Yeah. Any Thank other you. discussion with this one? Uh, well, no, Sonia just brought up the real world exa examples. So I think, um, yeah. And then, oh, gee, I, I, I had something, oh. uh, well, so I, you know, I guess this is really more for younger kids. It, it might apply to mm -hmm. middle school, but there's, there comes an age where you can't do this. And you know, the, the, the phrase, uh, don't post something online that, um, that if your mother saw it, you wouldn't, you would be really embarrassed. No, you know, uh, there's no, there's no age. Like this is the this is what I've learned. Where if mm -hmm. you're dealing with younger kids, you say mother. When you're dealing with older kids, say grandma. Ah, okay. So you're like, oh, you wouldn't want your grandma. And they're like, no, I don't want my nana to see that. <laughs> so it's like I've noticed that older kids, if you hit the grandma spot, it's a little bit more like, no, I don't want my grandpa to see that, see me like that. It's like, yeah, you want to think about that okay. before you think that. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, somebody at uh, at this conference that I was at this week was saying, um, you know, so I'm in the classroom, and I see them looking around to see if I'm looking at them, and I'm, you know, my what I say say to them is, just by virtue of the fact that that if you didn't want me to see it, you already knew it was wrong. Exactly. You know? so don't ask me if it was wrong or not. You know, like you knew you didn't want me to see it, so you knew it was wrong. Exactly. So don't do it. You know, like you're old enough, you can figure it out. Yeah. Yep. And it's one of those things where sometimes, I mean, we have to, we have to remember when we were that age and we, we say that like, duh, but sometimes it took somebody just telling you common sense for you to go, oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that's the secret. You know, so, I mean, just like, we got to say it. We, can, we can't be afraid to just point it out to them. <laughs> so let's move on to our second topic. And that is privacy. So we need to teach our students about privacy. And this is kind of getting into what you were saying um, earlier about um, those people singing you stuff. You don't know where they come from and things like that. So this is one of the things that I find teachers and librarians and everybody bringing up digital citizenship forgets to talk about because they feel like, well, you know, we tell them, of course, don't put too much information out. And then we just stop right there. So we forget to tell them about identity theft. and. Um, like you said, people singing you stuff that doesn't make sense and viruses. And we forget all those little things because we don't think about our students in that way. So I love the zip it, block it, flag it mentality. So the zip it is keep all your personal stuff personal. You know, and I tell them adults 
are the worst with putting on social media when they're not at home. They checking everywhere. They're like, oh, I'm in Hawaii. I'm on vacation. Oh, are you? So now I can go break in your house. Like they are the, they're worse than students with posting every step of their day to let me know that they are not at home, that their stuff is just waiting on me to come get it or any other number of things that I can do by knowing exactly where you are. So we talk about that and you know, I do, and I say the adults are the worst. So keeping your personal stuff private, thinking about what you say and do online. If you go on vacation, post your pictures after you come back, like just little things little things you, they don't need to know they don't need to know every step of your life blocking it and that's kind of what you were talking about with those people that are singing you all this stuff that doesn't make sense start blocking it you don't and we talk about trolls right you don't always have to respond to everything you just don't okay just like you don't respond to everything in real life you don't have to respond to everything online it just doesn't make sense go find something else to do so excuse me, blocking those people that send you those bad and nasty messages and to recognize them and recognize, you know what, that is all you're doing. And you're doing it on purpose to get a rise out of me. Um, don't open un unknown links and attachments. So that's kind of where you were going with, you know, people sending you the extra friend request or, you know, if it just looks weird, don't do it. Okay. It's one of those things where you use your intuition, use your common sense, you know, if something just doesn't feel right, it's not right. And if it's not, and if it was right, oh, well, you didn't friend a stranger. They'll be okay. You'll be okay. So it's just one of those things of just staying safe overall. And then flagging it. This is one that we discuss a lot with our students because it's easy for an adult to say, tell an adult, right? It's easy for us to say that because we're adults. It's not so easy for a student to do it. So there's some things that you want to kind of bring up with them. Um, you want to bring up to tell somebody. That's why I start. That's kind of the basis is, okay, something happened online. Tell somebody. Don't keep it to yourself. Tell your best friend. Tell whoever you trust. Tell somebody. But then we take it a step further of talking about that best friend that you may have told are talking about who you need to tell with what situation. So if it's something that is out of control, if it's something that, um, you know, someone is threatening you or anything like that, you do need to tell an adult. And we talk about, if you tell that best friend, what can that best friend really do about it? You know, now if it's something where, you know, somebody calls you a name, that may be best friend level. If it's something that they called you a name and they said they're going to do something to you, that may be an adult level. So we kind of talk about the different levels of, because again, just saying, tell an adult, all right, thanks. Like, thanks for that helpful tip. So we talk about the different levels and, and who you should be reaching out to and what an adult really means. Um, Because an adult doesn't mean, it doesn't even have to be somebody that's in your life, you know? And what I mean by that, I don't mean a stranger, but what I mean by that is, you know, if you have your parents, you have your teachers, it may be the counselor of the freshman counselor that you've never had, but you trust her, you see her around, she's an adult, she's at the school, go talk to her. You know, so it doesn't have to be that person that you love with all your heart. Just tell an adult, tell an adult, tell an adult. So, um, you know, but we talk about the different levels and how just saying tell an adult is not not the best advice if you don't give them kind of levels and ways to do that. So looking at privacy, I want to go to our next discussion and then we'll look at our third and final topic. What are the challenges and possible solutions with discussion, discussing this topic with your students? What do you think the challenges are and what are some solutions to those challenges? So um, hopefully Sonia can uh, can also put some questions in and some ideas in. But in the meantime, uh, I was thinking, like, how do you know that what you're saying has landed on them? How do you know that they got it and that they're going to, that they've internalized it and that they've made it their own? That to One me, that is, would be, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, oh, to that to me, that would be one of the biggest problems. Yeah. That was your challenge. I'm sorry. No, no, I thought you asked me. Right. Okay, so what do you right. think? What what, 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 no. Um, so I, I, 
so I the the thing that I came up with because I I hate to I hate to bring up a problem and not have any solution. <laughs> so okay. um, so it may not be the best solution in the world, but the one I came up with is to is to role play, and that maybe that would be one way of um, seeing if it's landed. But there's probably other things also. I really so, like that talent and solution. So, so Sonia brought up uh, as a challenge um, that um, that you don't, you know, like when you're finished with the explanation, you don't actually get to see them <laughs> when they're online. You know, they're doing mm -hmm. things when you're around. So you really don't know what they're doing and that they're so naive. So that's a big um, challenge. And it's funny because she, because <laughs> Sonia also wrote down role play. Um, Good. So, uh, so, so Sonia must must be really smart. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. Yeah. So, so, do you have other other ideas for that in addition to role play? No, I, and I really like that challenge because I mean, it is you don't know. Um, one of the things is well, it, it, a couple of things. I, I I love the role play where you kind of say, okay, well, let's let's go into this situation. How would you handle it? Kind of situation, kind of thing. Um, one of the things that I that I have found with my students is a kind of, and I hate to keep going back to this, but kind of what we talked about is the discussion part versus the me talking the whole time part. So, actually having that discussion and giving them almost a safe circle to talk about things that they've gone through and how they could possibly do that differently or you know how they could handle situations differently is really key because then you can actually see who's getting it um and of course you always have that student that can do really good lip service you know i mean all you can do is bring it up and bring up the discussion and and um hope that it's landing with that student that you know you're never going to reach every single baby you just won't yeah um but having that actual discussion where you're listening to their thought process and you're listening to what they're taking from it. And another thing is asking them, okay, asking them anonymously, like, what did you get from this? Was it a waste of time? Was it, you know, what did you, and that's one of the things that I did with my students is I asked them, hey, what, you know, what was this, what did you get from it? You know, anonymously, and I would tell them if it's a situation that you want to talk to me about or talk to somebody about um, a little bit deeper, mm -hmm. let me know. Put your name on it. We'll reach out to you. Um, you have to have, when you're bringing up discussions like this, you have to have some kind of outlet for your students. So you have to have some kind of, you can't just say this, 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 this. Oh, that was a great discussion. Have a good day. We'll never talk about it again. Like you have to have <laughs> some kind of follow up. You have to have some mm -hmm. kind of pain. If you, if you, that was quiet in the corner the whole time, I didn't think you were listening, but you were really thinking about that guy you just said you were going to meet on Sunday and now you're scared, here's an outlet. You know, you can write on mm -hmm. here, put your name, somebody will reach out, um, that kind of thing. But um, that's really, in my opinion, the only way you can really tell is to get them talking, get them communicating, get them mm -hmm. role playing, get them answering questions. That's the only way you can really tell if it's landing. I think it's one of those situations where because this is such a private um, topic, because they can go like, like, uh, was it Sonia? Like Sonia said, they can go home and do what they want to. Um, right. You don't, all you can do is put it out there, have them discuss it, hope it's landing. And the thing that you will find is even if they start, if even if they go and they start going into that dangerous situation, mm -hmm. your voice a lot of time comes up. <laughs> that little thing that you said in that session comes up. So Sonia brought up an interesting issue um, and actually a, an interesting suggestion for it also. And that is like, they may be using software or apps that you don't know or that you've mm -hmm. never heard of. So you don't really even know what the, you can know in general what the problems are, but, but I, I, like, you know, if I could tell somebody, hey, if you get an email from somebody, click on the, the, on the name and it will tell you who the email address is. And if the email address isn't that person, but I don't know, okay. I wouldn't necessarily know how to do that on Snapchat. And gotcha. maybe I didn't even know Snapchat. 
Okay, so so the quest, question is, is you know, the the problem is, is they may be using apps where you don't even you don't even, may not know what they're using, and even if you did know what they were using, you wouldn't know necessarily how to protect them yourself. But then mm -hmm. her solution was cool, which is you know brainstorming with them and sharing with them. So you know, in, interpreting that, it's like so you sit down with them and say, so you know, th this is my you know these are this is what you might do if you're doing an email or this is what you might do if you're doing text what exactly. other software do you use what other apps do you use what other problems are there so i think i think that was two really you know a really interesting question or problem and a really interesting solution that sonia brought up i really like that because again you just need to be real with them guys let's talk about snapchat i don't use it what happens on snapchat what are some of the dangers on snapchat and again, get them talking, get them discussing. That, I mean, that's, I think that's the solution for everything. Get them discussing. Um, but I really like that. And one of the things I go through, I have two take and train sessions. One is for parents and one is for students. And the one I'm doing at FECC is for students. But the one for parents, I actually talk about the lingo. I talk about the apps that they need to watch out for. Um, mm -hmm. I talk about some of the hiding apps, you know, the ones that look like a calculator and you're right. putting a code yeah. and then it goes to hide stuff. So, so we, we also, talk about- We used to use that at work. Uh, you know, <laughs> when the boss came by, <laughs> you know, the, the, the calculator app came up, you know? <laughs> and, you know, like a kick buddy and you're like, oh, that's my kick buddy. And that means sex buddy because kick is one of those apps that they use for that. I mean, so is there like- you're never going to know it all because new stuff comes up every day, you know? So it's just one of those things where you, you talk it out, you talk it out the best way you can. New stuff is going to come up every day. You're never going to know everything. Mm -hmm. So let's go to our third and then we can wrap up. So of course, this is where you get into that straight digital citizenship and that's talking to them about being positive online, talking to them about everything they do leaves a di digital uh, footprint. I really like the think model where they, before you post it on anything, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? I really like the, is it necessary? Is it necessary to show me every step of your day? Is it necessary to tell me you just ate a Kit Kat bar? It's really not. So I love that. Like, this isn't necessary. Is it helpful? Is it kind? Is it true? You know, there's so much, and adults are the worst at this. They'll repost stuff on Facebook and they don't, they never even check if it's true. They're just like, oh, so and so died. No, they didn't. Why are you reposting stuff? You don't even know if it's true. So I think the think model will be really good for adults as well. But talking about that digital citizenship, and I think one of the things that we make a, um, that we do wrong with digital citizenship, it's not wrong, but that we can do better with digital citizenship is teaching digital citizenship in isolation. Like guys, this is going to be our class about being good online instead of using it, using dig digital citizenship in all of our lessons. So if we're doing something online, you know, reminding them, oh, well, when you're posting, you want to make sure that you're not posting too much information. Just that little thing, you just taught them a little bit about digital citizenship and you didn't make it a big lesson. So I think that's one of the things that we're getting better at, but we're not there yet. Um, we think, oh, we're the English teacher or the librarian should be teaching digital citizenship, but it should be taught as we go and as we're teaching. You do you, you by any chance have this as a poster? This oh, you like can so find it. Okay. Yeah, you can find it. You can just Google like before you post think and you'll see a million of them. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, there's think, a, there's different colors, there's different kind. Oh yeah, you can find them. Okay. Yeah, they're really good. And then the be a good digital citizen is another nice poster I like that it kind of tells you a couple of the things with uh, digital citizenship to consider. So I'm going to kind of go on to the next slide just because I know we're going to be running out of time pretty soon. So what are some resources that can help with this discussion? Um, there is, uh, my mind just went completely blank. On my website, and I'm gonna give you my website at the end, I have a, um, a, uh, I have the two sessions that we talked about, the parent session and the student session. And I also have a um, presentation 
for uh, digital citizenship resources. So it's really, really good. I know Brain Pop just came out with a digital citizenship um, um, like video series that's completely free. Of course, Brain Pop is a pay a pay service, but the digital citizenship is completely free. Um, so th there's a lot of just really cool stuff out there to help teach and discuss digital citizenship. So does anybody else have resources? I think ISTE may have a lot of good resources also. Oh, right? sure, yes. And and actually, it's, 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 um, that that uh, Google may have some resources, and Maybe. she brought up um, Maybe. B, B, yeah, the, uh, things may be called B Internet mm -hmm. Awesome. Yes, uh-huh. And that, and then, is that a Google resource? It is, mm -hmm. and it's on my uh, website. It's on, the, it's on that uh, digital okay. citizenship. Yep, mm -hmm. that's on there. Also, um, Common Sense Media has a huge um, oh, right, listing of right. people. So, yeah, so there, it's a lot on there. But I wanted to see if you guys had any that you wanted to share. Well, the Be Internet Awesome was one, yeah. and the commonsense.org. Uh, Sonia also brought that up. Their Common Sense is great. Yeah. And, and, and I, I didn't know that. The uh, it's the Di Digital Citizenship PLN. So there is a mm -hmm. PLN, uh, um, Professional Learning Network, all dedicated from ISTE, dedicated to digital citizenship. Mm -hmm. It was interesting, at this, again, at this conference that I went to, um, one of the comments from somebody was that, you know, we really should be stopping, we shouldn't be talking today about digital citizenship. We should be talking about citizenship in a digital age, which was kind of like, well, wow, I that. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. But then, you know, and listening to you, I'm thinking, well, you know, yes, there is citizenship and there's citizenship in a digital age, but there's a huge subset of that called digital citizenship that really deserves its own call out because it really is something that isn't innate to any of us. Um, exactly. We have to be, we have to learn and we don't want to learn just by making mistakes because <laughs> some of those exactly. mistakes can be really bad. <laughs> They can really hurt us. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. And I think one of the things we do in education, and I talk about that to my teachers in other sessions, is we have to stop taking stuff away from them. We have to stop saying, well, baby, I'm going to take that Chromebook away because I don't feel like dealing with you doing something bad on it. Like, we got to, we have to teach them. We can't just keep shutting stuff down. We have to teach them how to use it right. All right. One of the there was a presentation by kids at the at the conference, and um, so I asked uh, one of my questions to the kids was what what is something that you'd like to tell to your teachers uh, advice in order to, for them to improve his teaching, and the, one, the kids one of the kids says well you know you should be asking us more questions you know yes we're not adults but we're not babies <laughs> we can you you can ask us questions and we can help sometimes. Let's, yeah, um, yeah, they're they're good. Okay, so um, yeah. did Sonia chime in on this one? Well, she she brought up common sense media. She brought up the B yeah. Internet Awesome, um, yeah. and uh, she commented also on the fact that we you know we have to learn to fly all this in our digital world. So uh, yeah, um, so it's good, and then. Um, you know, I know that so you're, these are my presentations at FECC. Um, the one that I'm talking about is to take and train student cyber safety. And that is the one where I actually show you this is how I presented this to my students. So it's different from this. And we still do some discussion, believe me. Um, but it's, you know, <laughs> this is actually what I say. This is actually what I show. It's very video heavy, right? Because you don't want to just be mm -hmm. like wrong, 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 like Charlie Brown's teacher up there just talking. So it's very video heavy. and. You know, and I give you that presentation and you can actually take it and modify it and do what you want to with it. And then I have the other two at Moto and um, Google Forms level two. And I see you have the discount. You have a discount code also. So people who want to yes. register you can get a discount code by uh, when they're checking out, they type in the Alexander 19. Yeah. Now, and if people do you travel, I mean, if somebody was at a school, um, uh, that wasn't in Louisiana, could they contact you and have you come to their oh, yeah. school? Travel all over the nation. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. And Sonia was saying she's looking forward to meeting you at FETC. And Sonia, I'm, meet, I'm interested in meeting you at FETC also, so because I'll be there too. also. 
You have so to come that, up and remind me, like I was the one that was in your that was on the right. webinar. I'm sorry, yeah. Like come up and let me know. So uh and then on yeah. the next slide I have my contact information. So if they do want to contact me, um, it's on the next slide. Oops, I'm I'm clicking in the wrong place. Yeah. There we go. Yep. Yeah, so that's my website where you can find the resources and educatoralexander at gmail.com is my email address and my phone number and all that is also on the website. Okay. And as I said, this is being recorded. So I think uh, usually we find, uh, you know, somewhere between 30 and 60 people look at the recordings. So if you're looking at this as a recording, uh, feel free to uh, reach out to uh, Desiree um, at her email address or her Twitter handle and download resources at the at the website and uh, you have a you have a final statement to, to close off Desiree um well on the website you would go to presentations and then you'll see take and train and that's how you can get there and just mm -hmm. um don't sometimes you're gonna have to get out of your comfort zone with this topic is not always a comfortable topic to bring up with students because you don't know where it's going to go. But I think it's important because you don't know where it's going to go. That's why it's so important because if it goes to that dangerous place, your students are dealing with that on their own. So they're going to need help with it. Right. Because if it's if it's uncomfortable for you to talk about them and to talk about it with them, just imagine how uncomfortable it'll be for them when it really happens. And that's even worse. Exactly. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you. And I'll see you uh, see you in about uh, two months, I guess. Uh, yes. down in Florida. Okay. Yes. Well, Desiree, thank you. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you for doing for thank doing you. the NSA interactive and um, have a, you know, have, have a good rest of the day or evening and, um, and rest of the week. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And this is Mitch Weisberg. I'm uh, signing off for EdShed Interactive. Uh, those, uh, Sonia, thank you for participating. Those of you who are watching the recording, thank you for taking a look at this. And please come to other events at www.edshedinteractive.org. Uh, looking forward to seeing you at FETC. And uh, good night.